Tonight, Dish announces streaming services for cord cutters, Samsung's new slew of monitors with nano crystals, and what is a Netflix recommended TV anyway? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 246 for Monday, January 5th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015 with lynda.com, which has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN and the number two. Hello, everybody. Happy January. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Cord cutters rejoice because you now have one more option. Dish uh, launched a new service today called Sling TV that gives customers live cable TV in a subscription-based package for $20 per month. Now, Sling TV is designed for people who already have broadband, but for whatever reason, don't want to pay for that full-on cable package. Dish nego negotiated rights to content with big media companies like Disney and Turner and Scripps. That means channels like ESPN and ESPN2, the Disney Channel, ABC Family, Food Network, HGTV, TNT, CNN, and the Cartoon Network. An extra $5 gives subscribers other options like a kids extra pack, which includes networks like Disney Junior, I've never heard of that, and Blue and Boomerang, which I've also never heard of, but I don't have kids. The news and information extra pack includes the Cooking Channel, HLN, and Bloomberg. Dish TV does have limitations, though. Only one device will be able to access the stream at any time, and no DVR capabilities either, at least for now. Well, it is CES week, and AT&T has announced at its annual developer summit, which is held the day before the trade show officially starts, that it will be the first carrier in the U.S. to support web real-time communication, better known as WebRTC, which is HTML5-based, and allows users to make voice and video calls natively in a browser without needing a plug-in. AT&T says the accompanying API will let customers use their mobile numbers to make phone calls and video chats video chats or chats from within the browser and then transfer those calls to their smartphones without the calls dropping. So a little handoff action. The company also says a beta is coming first to developers followed by a public rollout. The web RTC API is currently supported by Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. Not Safari though or Internet Explorer, although Microsoft does say it plans to use web RTC for its upcoming Skype for web service. GoGo, -Go, which is everyone's favorite in-flight internet service that never seems to work on any flight that I'm ever on, has been issuing fake SSL certificates to throttle video streaming. Video streaming obviously takes up a lot of bandwidth. GoGo CTO Anand Chari explained in a statement that, quote, GoGo takes our customers' privacy very seriously. We are committed to bringing the best internet experience to the sky. Right now, GoGo is working on many ways to bring more bandwidth to an aircraft. Until then, we have stated that we don't support various streaming video sites and utilize several technologies to limit or block video streaming. The company also denies that it's working with law enforcement to intercept users' activities and share their data, though, as you can imagine, people are worried about that, too. The Federal Communications Commission is trying to make it easier for consumers to report problems with their internet or their phone or their TV providers with a fancy new complaint site. The FCC says that not only does the improved site better provide communications between consumers and consumer representatives at the FCC, but also the ability for consumers to monitor complaints 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, maybe you just really want to be in there, and now you can. Consumers Union, which is the advocacy arm of Consumer Reports, says that it weighed in with input to the FCC as the commission was building the new complaints portal. The FCC still has work to do, though. The comment site crashed before one of the deadlines in the very controversial net neutrality proceeding with almost 4 million comments streaming in. Well, I did mention that it was CES week and joining us from CES is Alex Wilhelm, tech reporter at TechCrunch. Hey, Alex. Hello. So we mentioned we were talking a little bit before the show. Uh, sounds like you have managed to, I don't know, you've got enough hand sanitizer. You're not sick yet. That's a, that's a thing that tech journalists uh, complain about. You leave CES and everybody's got the flu. Yeah, by Thursday, it's pretty much like a leper colony. It's terrible. And then all of next week, no one can actually work because we're all just totally sick. So if you want to launch some bad news in tech, next Monday probably is the best time to do it. Oh, that's no good to around. know. That's good to yeah, know. know. Well, Period. yeah, the PR people who watch the show now, you've got you've got a little insider tip from TechCrunch. Okay, so today at LG's CES press event, 
Uh, the company and well, it was it was announced that Netflix would be now recommending TVs. Now, when I first read the story, I thought, well, it, it is, is this is not content based. This is actually hardware based, right? Yeah, it's, it's designed to let Netflix test half-ass TV startup, half-ass the handle content, and so forth. So if you buy a TV that you want to keep for, say, two or three years, you want it to work well with Netflix. And so Netflix is saying, if you buy this TV and you use Netflix, you'll be pretty much in good hands. Mm. Um, tech changes really fast. I think smart TVs have been always kind of a rough concept and never really finished. So if Netflix says, you know, but if you buy this set, you're good. It probably gives you some more confidence. Um, the question is, will Samsung participate? We don't know yet, but uh, Sony, Vizio, and other uh, OEMs are already kind of on board for the, uh, the service. So. Well, why wouldn't why wouldn't Samsung participate? You would think that if you were one of the big companies that aren't on the Netflix list, somehow that's a huge bummer for the company because Netflix is basically saying that your product is inferior. Well, Samsung kind of wants to take its own ball and go home. I mean, today it really tied a Tizen, which no one uses, uh, at its uh, initial keynote before its actual keynote stream two today. Um, I think they'll probably eventually come on board, but they're holding out now just because they think they can. I mean, they have 437,000 employees. They're massive. I think they're kind of above, in their own mind, other providers. Yeah, Samsung definitely is, is uh, well, we'll talk a little bit more about Samsung ties in a little sure. later in the show, but let's talk about another Netflix story that you wrote that the company is arguing against internet fast lanes uh, because yes. uh, there's some opposition to net neutrality that's happening. Now, we've, we've covered this pretty extensively. Netflix obviously is already paying companies like Comcast in order to be able to uh, stream something directly to me as a consumer. It doesn't want to do that anymore. Well, not, not exactly. They, they, they pay for interconnection, which is they can hook into Comcast's um, uh, points so they can put content onto Comcast network. They're not paying for faster connection from that data point to the actual consumer. So they had two separate issues. Mm. Um, but this post says we should not have fast lanes, which would be across Comcast at faster speeds. Um, and that's what Tom Wheeler of the SEC kind of said we might do this uh, last year. Um, the new rules should come out, I believe, in February mm -hmm. uh, and voted on in that month. So we don't really know what the, the final conception will look like. But Netflix is saying one more time with feeling, do not do this. It is a very bad idea. Just as Congress is coming back with a new majority in the Senate saying we should do the opposite of that. And so the battle lines there, are, as I kind of wrote, are really, really becoming kind of solidified and, and forceful. And I, I don't know what's going to happen next. And I think we're all kind of waiting around for the SEC to start leaking stuff about what their final plans will be. But until then, we're all just kind of hanging out. Yeah, you know, that was actually going to be my next question to you. What is your sure. best guess on what may happen? We've we've been hearing, yeah, two sides of, you know, not, not only uh, people in Congress, but companies who aren't necessarily, nobody's on the same page here. So... What, what, yeah, I guess, I guess I, maybe, maybe my question is, what, what do you think is going to happen? I don't think we're going to go with Title X, which was the idea of building a whole new regulatory structure to kind of base net neutrality on. I think that would be too hard to get through Congress uh, in any capacity. I think I wouldn't be surprised to see Title II use, which is what the president called for, and Tom Wheeler showed some initial reticence to actually go through with, given the legal struggles it will take up from the private sector. But I don't... I don't know if there's a hybrid solution that would kind of fuse 706 and Title II, the two different kind of legal foundations that are being discussed um, that's leading right now. And so I just, I, I don't know, and I really hate to say that, I'm sorry, but I'm just not sure yet. And I, I don't think anyone right now outside of, you know, Chairman Wheeler himself really has a good guess of where we're going to be in a month. Um, I just hope it ends up with strong regulations, but, you know, we're going to have to see it. So you're at CES, I guess sort of an overall question that I want to ask you, and, and again, it's early in the week, is what are your impressions of CES this year? Year after year, you have journalists who always cover CES, and there's a certain amount of excitement. It's kind of a, you know, it's a rite of passage, it's just a badge of honor if you can get through alive. <laughs> but then there are a lot of other uh, folks who work in tech that say, this is mostly products that companies roll out that never even get to consumers that are supposed to be in development that uh, seem to uh, sort of fall off the radar. Does this year yeah, seem no, any different to you? No. And there's a third category, stuff that will come out that I don't care about. Mm -hmm. Like that's to me is, is the biggest category of everything that you see at CES. Like today at the Samsung keynote, they talked about like washing machines for like a long period of time. And I know that matters, but it's not technology that it's all applicable to my work. And so you know, I spend so much time here talking to people and looking at stuff that I don't, A, understand, or B, kind of want to write about. Mm -hmm. But I don't get a lot done in that sense. Um, it is a rite of passage and everyone does come. I don't know if that's a very efficient way to go about writing a publication, but we're all here. You know, I mean, like Mashable, CNET, Verge, TechCrunch, we all have huge crews out here. And we do every single year. Um, and I don't see it stopping in the short term. So no matter how gripey and complaining I become as the week gets worse and I do get sick, uh, I think I'll probably be right back in this same hotel in about 363 days. So we can do it again. 
It'll be fun. <laughs> Alex Wilhelm writes for TechCrunch, tech reporter over there. Thanks for joining us and enjoy As your always. week in Vegas and, and let folks know where they can keep up with everything that you are publishing from the trade show. Uh, TechCrunch.com slash CES, I believe, and I'm Alex on Twitter. Excellent. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. See you. Coming up, more new announcements from CES, like, you know, we were talking about Samsung and Tizen. There's something called SUHD TV. We will explain what that means in just a few. But first, let's thank Lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Lynda.com, that's L-Y-N-D-A, Lynda with a Y, is used by millions of people all over the world and has over 4,500 courses that you can join and, and, and watch and, and learn at your leisure on topics like web development, maybe you're interested in photography, maybe you got a fancy new camera for, for over the holidays, business, software training like Excel. Oh, do I need that? I don't know how Excel works at all. WordPress, Photoshop, the list goes on. Maybe you've got a plan for yourself in 2015. You want to take control of a, a certain part of your professional life that you think you, you, you could flesh out a little bit more. Maybe you just want to learn a completely new skill. Maybe, maybe you just want a new hobby. Lynda.com is perfect. Courses like Monday Productivity Pointers or Managing Your Time for all you procrastinators out there or setting up a mobile office so that you can work from anywhere and not feel like you're missing your home desk situation. You might have 50 minutes. You might have all week. Each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace from start to finish. And you can jump around as well. All lynda.com courses are taught by people who know what they're talking. They're experts. People who are professionals. They're, they're the, they, they are the top of their field. So do something good for yourself in 2015 and sign up for a free, free, I said free, 10-day trial at lynda.com. You just go to lynda, L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T N two. That's 10 days of unlimited access to every course on the entire site. That includes access on mobile devices, iOS and Android, both supported, and new courses are added each week. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. Challenge yourself to learn something new in 2015. I will be doing the same. On to a few more stories that we're following today from CES. We mentioned Samsung, and now it's Samsung's turn. The company has a new, new, new TV technology that it wants to sell you, SUHD, which is actually a trio of new Samsung displays that all run on Tizen, and they range from 48 inches to 88 inches big and come in three different model lines. Nano crystal semiconductors inside the displays are supposed to allow for more accurate colors, and the panels are also doubling the color adjustment points. So if you're one of those people who just really wants to customize how it looks, fine-tune that, it's a pretty interesting way to go. Samsung says that its new remastering process automatically will analyze image brightness to minimize power usage, even if you're boosting up your contrast or you like your video really bright. And the company is also showing off its quantum dot display. Everybody's got one. Samsung's is 105 inches big and bendable because Samsung loves the flexible displays. But this is CES. And so, you know, Lenovo is another company that's taking the opportunity to announce a slew of new products of its own, such as two new laptops, including the 13-inch LaVZ notebook, which Lenovo says is world's lightest 13-inch laptop, even more than the, the MacBook Air, the 13-inch Air. Four new yoga uh, laptops from Lenovo as well, and tablet convertibles, along with a new technology called AnyPen. This is actually kind of cool. Let's you use a metal object any metal object as a stylus. So maybe if you're like me, you don't have your stylus, but you have a pocket full of bobby pins, for example. Two new smartphones, a waterproof, uh, waterproof fitness wristband with an e-ink display that receives smartphone notifications, and even something called the selfie flash. It's kind of what it sounds like. It's $29 and it promises better lighting for all your future vanity collections. Although, interestingly enough, the company says that the selfie flash will not be sold in the U.S., which is probably a good move because I've never actually met a vain American. Lenovo plans to announce more products tomorrow, including PC devices for the home and on the go, more laptops, 3D cameras, and all-in-one desktops. They are taking CES pretty seriously this year. Would you like a little bit more CES news? I'll be here all week. Google announced Google Cast for audio, which allows users to play back audio from apps directly to speakers or sound bars or AV receivers, which is kind of cool for people like me who 
already have some of that stuff and we like to be able to lock it into to new devices. The company says that Sony and LG and Heos, that's a new product by Denon, will be the first to offer Google Cast Ready products this spring. And it works a lot like Google's Chromecast works. You tap a cast button in an app on an Android or iOS device or on the web, and then you select a Google Cast supported device, and then the speakers will pull content directly from the cloud. Apps that have already signed on include Deezer, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, NPR One, Pandora, RDO TuneIn, kind of the big players. And Google says many more companies will follow. The first cast-supported products will most likely launch during the first quarter of this year, which is 2015, by the way. Does that scare you? It scares me. Finally, according to a tweet by SpaceX boss Elon Musk, the company is getting really close to its next launch. Musk says that SpaceX's drone spaceport ship well, you know what it is, has left the dock and is now headed to its position, its holding position in the Atlantic Ocean. So tomorrow, which is January 6th, the company is expected to launch its Falcon 9 rocket and will attempt to land that rocket onto the ship. The ship is actually quite large. It's 30,000 square feet in size, with engineers attempting a landing accuracy of 10 meters on each side. Wow. SpaceX is the first company to attempt a rocket landing of this magnitude, although you might recall in August of last year, a Falcon 9 did explode in midair during a similar flight over Texas. This launch was first scheduled for December, this particular one for tomorrow, but it hit delays after a faulty test fire. We're rooting for you, SpaceX. Let's do this. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, of course, if you're a morning person, don't miss our morning news program, which is Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can catch both. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.